Give us an update. What is the atmosphere there? Yes, yeah, so there's a lot of nervous anticipation. Obviously, this date has been highly anticipated. But, you know, there's also a lot of uncertainty. The government has continued to maintain strict restrictions on people within the city. And everyone's lives and movements are really governed by these green codes that um, show your health conditions, your temperature, your close contact. And you need them to go everywhere to get onto the train, to get onto the plane, um, to go in the shopping mall, to go um, into any building or restaurant. And so even though people are rushing to get out, there was a lot of fear as well that they wouldn't actually be able to board their, their flights or their trains. Uh, we were just at the airport where there was a whole crowd of people at the entrance trying to figure out how to get in, especially older people um, who couldn't really navigate the QR code that the airport had as well. You know, security staff outside getting overwhelmed by questions. People, some people even trying to force their way through. I'm um, in the airport. A lot of people wearing full protective gear. You know, that's really become the norm. Uh, people keeping their distance. So it's like a mix of excitement, but also nervousness and, you know, just a, a, quite a bit of tension in the air. Sharon, you've been on the ground since the weekend in Wuhan. What is your sense of how quickly economic activity and business is picking up? Yeah, I think the main takeaway is, takeaway is that it's going to take a lot of time. You know, it's a long road ahead for Wuhan. And it's really a cautionary tale for all these other major cities like New York, like London, like Milan. You know, it's not going to be a flip of a switch when they lift their lockdowns. You know, people are just cautious. They're cautious about uh, getting the virus, about the second wave, about uh, coming into contact with someone who might have positive or might display symptoms and they themselves getting quarantined again. Uh, you know, people have also gotten so used to keeping their distance that there is a little bit of a shift just in the way that people interact and in the, the cultural um, sense because, you know, people have just gotten used to not gathering in crowds, not really going to crowded places. Um, even restaurants, uh, they're beginning to open, but nobody's actually going inside to eat. Restaurant owner, a restaurant owner told us that, you know, even though they're lifting the lockdown today, it's not really being lifted in the real sense because life isn't going to return to normal for some time yet. And Sharon, you mentioned it's going to take a while for business activity to really return back to these pre-outbreak levels. And I guess most economists we talk to say they're expecting some type of deep contraction for the economy. So it makes sense that we're hearing now that perhaps the policymakers are, are thinking about scrapping that growth target for China now, too. Yes, that is a really interesting debate. And actually, it uh, would be politically uh, wise of them, I mean, to set that kind of target. It's just completely unrealistic right now to still expect to grow around 6% this year. And, you know, like our um, economics reporters, wrote in their story today, uh, it would put a lot of pressure on government officials, not only to boost stimulus to a point where it's unsustainable and not helpful in the long term, but it might even put pressure on officials to make up numbers or try to boost the figures to meet those targets, even though it doesn't reflect real economic activity. And But it seems like markets at least are, are pricing in that we're going to see more stimulus from, from governments. What, what exactly are they pricing in at the moment? What could still, what could still be deployed? Uh, we could still see more rate cuts, and the Politburo has also signaled that they are going to raise the fiscal deficit ratio. Um, you know, that would give uh, local governments more ability to spend and to boost uh, the economy and boost infrastructure spending and boost consumption that way. Um, you know, there is a consumption campaign underway already in China, really being led by the local governments, uh, you know, through vouchers, through subsidies and stuff like that. But it is taking a long time to flow through. I mean, the psychological impact of the virus is really a, a big hurdle than I think a lot of people really grasp. Um, people are still very afraid, just, you know, hesitant to go outside and to return to work and get back to their normal lives.